Hello people, in this video we want to look at uh, osteoporosis, bone, pores, so you can understand. So there are more holes in the bone. So there is reduction in the bone density. So here you can see the healthy bone and the osteoporotic bone has more pores, right? There is reduction in bone density. So this is what is osteoporosis. So we will be reading about this in orthopedics now. So these people have a weak bone. So what will they be prone to? pain, right, pathological fractures, that means very easy to fracture, right, that is pathological fractures can happen. So basically, let us look at the overall picture. There is something called as metabolic bone diseases. In metabolic bone diseases, you have osteopenic diseases, osteosclerotic diseases, osteomalacic diseases and then you have mixed diseases. Our disease currently that we are looking at now that is osteoporosis. We are trying to look uh, uh, at osteoporosis that comes under osteopenic, penic, osteopenic disease. That means there is decrease in the bone density. What happened? Yeah, there is decreased. There is a uh, decrease in the bone mass, right? That's what we are looking at. So there is loss of bone matrix. Zoom. Yes. Are you able to see now? So, there is loss of bone matrix. There is decrease in the bone mass. So, this is what we are looking at. Osteopenic disease. What is what is osteosclerotic then? There is increase in bone mass. Sclerosis, right? Osteomalacic disorder. That means softness, right? Softness is more kind of a thing you can say. So, the ratio of the organic fraction to the mineralized fraction will be more in osteomalacia. Okay. So, uh, in vitamin D deficiency in adults, if there is vitamin D deficiency, osteomalacia will happen. Okay. Now, look at this uh, image here to understand. Bone mass in the normal, there is bone mass and mineralized, right? So, in osteopenia, they have shown you, what have they shown? The bone mass has reduced. In osteosclerosis, the mineralized part has increased. In osteomalacia, the mineralized part has reduced. Okay, osteomalacia usually will be because of vitamin D deficiency in adults. Okay, and even uh, uh, children can have. Okay, if they have vitamin D deficiency along with this osteomalacia, they can have rickets. Okay, so basically, did you get a uh, introduction? So what are we looking at today? Osteoporosis. What is it? Osteoporosis is a metabolic bone disease. So, under metabolic bone disease, you have osteopenic diseases. Under that, you have osteomalacia. Sorry, osteoporosis. Osteopenic disease, osteoporosis. Very good. So, basically, why is the bone losing mass? We have to find out, right? There is a reduction in bone density due to re reduction in bone mass. This is the commonest metabolic bone disease. Okay, it is very common. Commonest metabolic bone disease. There is a decrease in the bone mass. So, what happens is the rate of formation is less but the rate of resorption is more. That is bone destruction has become more. The formation of bone has become less. Okay. So, this is what is osteoporosis. What are the causes now? We have to look at the causes. There is a whole table here. So, basically for men it is old age. For women it is menopause. Okay. So, let us look at all the causes of generalized osteoporosis. Here is the table. Look at this. Senility. So, men they said it is because of old age. For women, postmenopause. And I have this one. I have this uh, osteoporosis or post immobilization. Give me a better color. Post immobilization, I have osteoporosis, generalized osteoporosis. This is what I have because I was bedridden for some time. Now I can feel, you know, from that time, my bones, knees, they're not at all the same. Very, very weak. Okay. Uh, that is because of uh, when a bone, when you are bedridden, the bone will lose mass. Okay. So that is what I have. Post immobilization. Then let us say protein deficiency. Protein deficiency. If you have protein deficiency, you will have osteoporosis, right? Nothing to do with your age or menopause or bedridden status, right? Malnutrition, malabsorption, protein loss you are having because of burns or uh, what is a C uh, CRF is what? Renal failure. If there is renal failure, then they are not able to hold protein, is it? So they are losing protein. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, all those. Okay, that makes sense. Then coming to Cushing's disease, Cushing syndrome. That means there is excess of um, uh, uh, adrenal 
secretions, so steroids, hormones, right? So because of all those uh, excess mineralocorticoids, that is aldosterone, then you have glucocorticoids being more, the steroids being more. So all those will increase the osteoporosis, okay? Then hyperthyroidism. So basically you can see excess of adrenal action or excess of thyroid action, adrenal action being more or thyroid action being more, both of these can lead to osteoporosis, okay? Then if you're taking long-term steroid, steroid again, same thing, adrenal gland, gland uh, secretion, so steroid being more. What about phenobarbiton? Phenobarbiton is what type of drug? Anti-epileptic drug and they, they are saying that that also can lead to osteoporosis. <coughs> So now, can you tell the causes of osteoporosis? Osteoporosis can be caused by, think, senile, very good, menopause, postmenopausal, very good, uh, bedridden, yes, post immobilization, very good, then uh, protein deficiency, very good, then uh, I'm thinking vitamin, no, 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 protein deficiency, then uh, what else did you see? Uh, phenobarbiton. Then we saw some uh, adrenal gland secretions being more, Cushing's uh, syndrome, Cushing's disease, hyperthyroidism. Then you saw if the person is taking steroids or phenobarbiton. Did we miss anything? Let's see. That's it. Great. We have covered everything in causes of osteoporosis. Now let us look at the clinical features. Clinical features will be asymptomatic. The first thing they are saying is asymptomatic. Okay. So you, they may be totally fine or they will have pathologic fracture. Pathologic fracture means for a trivial trauma or absolute no trauma, they can have a fracture. And which is the most common site? It is the dorsolumbar spine, spine fracture. Other fractures have you seen? Yes, Cole's fracture you have seen, fall on an outstretched hand, especially a postmenopausal woman will have a Cole's fracture leading to dinner folk deformity, which we have covered in Cole's fracture video. Okay, and then the next thing they're talking about is femur. Of what, what of femur? Neck of femur fracture can happen. Okay. Loss of height will be there in these people and there will be increased kyphosis. Kyphosis is this one, right? This part of the curve is the kyphosis. So this is more, right? So there will be, why is all this happening? Because of compression of the anterior part of the vertebral body. So the anterior part of the vertebral bodies are compressed okay so obviously when there is compression let's understand this there is something like this right and there is anteriorly it is compressing so what will happen if it is compressed like this it will bend right like this so this is the kyphosis increased kyphosis due to compression of anterior part of vertebral bodies. So there is loss of height. These people are becoming shorter and shorter. What is your height? 5 feet. After some years, oh, it is 4 point something. Okay. Now let's move to the investigations you will do. Okay. Investigations. Radiological features, what will you see? Decreased bone mass. Should we tell you? Yes. Decreased bone mass. Um, but uh, it will not be very apparent. After about 30% of loss only, you can't come to know. Okay. Then. Col loss of vertical height of vertebra due to collapse. Vertical height of uh, vertebra is lost. You can see that it is bending, right? Kyphosis. Codfish appearance. So these are some appearances that you that will have to tell. Decreased bone mass, you said. Then loss of vertical height of vertebra. Okay. Then because there is collapse, collapsing, they are saying, of the vertebra. Then codfish appearance. Codfish appears, the disc bulges into the adjacent vertebral body so that the disc becomes biconvex. Disc becomes biconvex. Biconvex means what of the disc, not of the vertebral body. Here they are talking about the disc. What is happening to the disc? They are saying disc becomes biconvex. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Lateral view you are seeing. What are they pointing and showing here? The vertebra, osteoporosis, X-ray of dorsal spine and this is the disc, right, which you are actually not able to see. That is the disc. So, biconvex it has become. Actually, that part of it we can easily see here, isn't it? Biconvex, 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 correct? Is that, the, is that what they mean? 
cod fish appearance oh that's like a fish okay by convex like you know how we draw fish like this by convex right okay then ground glass appearance of the bones conspicuous of bones in like in the pelvis okay pelvis bone ground glass appearance especially in the pelvis okay and after that let's look at sings index based on this uh, uh, trabecular pattern of this femoral head and neck right so there is some grading of the osteoporosis so sing and others graded osteoporosis <clears throat> into six grades based on the trabecular pattern okay of the femoral neck trabeculae so this will tell you about osteoporosis in the x-ray okay then six grades you have to remember six grades based on the trabecular pattern on femoral neck this much we'll remember then metacarpal index and vertebral index let's look at this what is this metacarpal means where okay in the hand vertebral index are other methods of quantification of osteoporosis okay nothing just for grading quantifying the osteoporosis you can use the trabecular pattern of the femoral neck or you can use it or uh, you can use metacarpal some kind of an index or vertebral column by studying you can tell the degree of osteoporosis remember decreased bone mass you can tell only after 30 percent after about 30 percent is lost then only you will be able to tell okay so we are done with radiological now let us go to other investigations that you will do other investigations think what other investigations can you do for this people what do you think is wrong they'll have less protein and albumin okay so basically uh, they don't have problem with calcium levels or etc so the alp calcium phosphate all these levels are normal okay then you can do a densitometry this is yet another test after biochemistry you have some densitometry you can measure the density is it photons are emitted from gamma isotopes okay from gamma emitting isotopes and these photons are absorbed by calcium okay so these photons are absorbed by bone calcium and then you can know how much is absorbed then you will know the bone density so there are two types of bone density meters or metries available you have ultrasound based ultrasound based okay and then you have x-ray based fine so for x-ray based you have dexa scan so for the bone for bone densitometry you can order a dexa scan it's the gold standard gold standard for quantification of bone mass densitometry so dexa scan it is x-ray basically let's make this gold scan okay then you have one more thing other than this densitometry you have something called as neutron activation analysis so neutron activation is as simple as that you are going to activate the bone calcium with neutron and you will measure the activity then you have bone biopsy you can take a part of the piece of the bone and study it right that becomes bone biopsy so have you ever heard of bone biopsy it is interesting right anyways now look at the uh, investigations that you saw you saw what and all you will see in radiological features you saw you will see that there is decreased bone mass then you saw some sings index then you saw metacarpal index and some other vertebral index in the vertebra you can see that there is a compression is it something like that they said then um, uh, that fish fish cord fish appearance you saw right then what else did you see in radiological well, let's revise radiological ones decrease bone mass loss of vertical height cord fish ground glass appearance of the pelvis yes this one we missed then sings index metacarpal and vertebral index so great okay now other investigations what and all did we see biochemistry you can measure calcium phosphate al uh, alkaline phosphate all that will be normal what will not be normal is the serum protein serum protein will not be normal right um, <clears throat> protein will be less albumin will be less then uh, they said that um, what else can you see <clears throat> densitometry if you do you can do some dexa scan and something like ultrasound based basically this is uh, 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 photons are emitted by some gamma emitting isotopes these are 
absorbed by bone calcium and then you can check so you have the ultrasound based and you have the extra based and x-ray based under which you have the dexa scan dexa scan uh, is the gold standard standard did we get the full form of this uh, dexa let's guess okay then densitometry x-ray something wait so dexa full form is a dual energy x-ray absorption metry <coughs> And the uh, after gamma neutron activation of the bone uh, calcium, then bone biopsy. Don't forget bone biopsy. Okay. Then this is the diagnosis. Now let's move on to the treatment. So generally, they are saying it is uh, difficult to treat, and uh, <clears throat> there are many factors affecting etc. etc. Let's come to medical treatment. High protein diet. Okay. So just eat high protein diet, malnutrition, and all you remove, then it will become fine. Then calcium you can give this person. Calcium supplementation. Give androgens. Why you will give androgens? Hormones. Right, because they have an anabolic effect, anabolic effect on bones, right? Anabolic effect on protein matrix of bone, okay? Then, <clears throat> estrogen. So, you must have heard of all this hormone replacement therapy, etc., right? For postmenopausal, for postmenopausal osteoporosis, okay? Androgen, I'm guessing for males they are talking about. Yeah. Then, when they give calcium, they should give vitamin D also, obviously. Fluoride they will give. See, some amount of fluoride is good, not excess amount, okay. But this is still, they are thinking about it. More excess fluoride you will give, then it is bad. That also you should remember, okay. Alendronate. What will alendronate do? Bisphosphonate, right. So, basically... Calcium helps in uh, osteoporosis, right? Then, calcitonin. What will calcitonin do? It was opposite of hyper uh, parathyroid hormone. So, it will uh, not allow bone resorption. Okay. So, calcitonin you will give. So, give calcium, vitamin D, calcitonin. This much anybody will say. Bisphosphonate standard treatment for osteoporosis, isn't it? Then, Terry. Paratide. What a name, right? Terry Paratide. So, what is this Terry Paratide? So, it is an anabolic agent increasing osteoblastic, that is newborn formation. Okay. Newborn formation. So, what is it? Terry Paratide. Terry Paratide. Terry Paratide will help in newborn formation. Terry Paratide. Then you have some crazy names which are anti-resorptive agents. Those names are here. Denosumab, strontium. Strontium we know, right? It's an element. Strontium, anti-resorptive agents. Okay. So this is all about the treatment of uh, osteoporosis. Quite a lot of terminologies we have learned here. Let us learn the easy ones. You will give calcium, vitamin D and uh, bisphosphonates and calcitonin. All these go hand in hand. Then estrogen for postmenopausal, androgen, anabolic effect, high protein diet. Yes, that also you will say. Fluoride is something that probably wouldn't flash in my mind at least very easily. I'll put this at the end. And uh, these are some names that you should know. Teriparatide, new bone formation. Dinosumab, strontium for as anti-resorptive agents. Okay. Then coming to orthopedic treatment. What is orthopedic treatment for this? You can do exercise. Oh, this is orthopedic treatment. Weight bearing is a stimulus for bone formation. Okay. It's a stimulus for bone formation. What is a stimulus for bone formation? Weight bearing. Well, that's very hard, I think. Okay. Increased guarded activity would therefore be of benefit to the patient. But you should be guarded. Don't go and lift something and you are already prone to pathological fracture, isn't it? Bracing. Okay. Bracing. Standard bracing. So that means you are going to brace the spine, etc. to prevent the pathological fractures in a severely ortho, uh, ortho, oh, sorry, osteoporotic spine. Bracing, you know what it is, right? Something like that. Okay. That's a brace. Now, let's take a recap of what we have seen in this video. We wanted to look at osteoporosis. Basically, osteoporosis is an osteopenic uh, disease of the bone. That is, um, there is a res reduction in the bone density. <clears throat> this can lead to pathological fractures, etc. So, basically, in metabolic diseases of bone, you have seen osteopenic diseases. Example, osteoporosis. Then you have uh, 
uh, varieties of uh, bone metabolic bone diseases anyways <clears throat> here we are concerned about osteoporosis where there is decrease in the bone mass which they are showing you here in osteopenia now this is the commonest metabolic bone disease and there is reduction in bone density decrease in bone mass uh, the rate of bone resorption is more than the rate of bone formation okay so why does this happen in males it happens because of old age and female is because of postmenopausal because there's no estrogen right not much of estrogen so it can happen because of senility postmenopausal it can also happen in immobilization that is a bedridden patient bone he's not using so there will be bone resorption a protein deficiency if you have obviously if you have protein deficiency you will have very weak bones endocrinal causes like increased uh, adrenal uh, secretions like cushing disease uh, sorry cushing disease yes cushing syndrome that means there's a lot of intake of these steroids etc so that will uh, cushing disease will manifest as cushing syndrome uh, hyperthyroid state that is hyperthyroidism and then uh, if the person is taking long term steroid therapy and uh, if they are taking phenobarbital that is anti epileptic drug that also can happen to cause osteoporosis the clinical features are they can be asymptomatic or they can be having fractures very easy fracture uh, tr with very small trauma trivial trauma dorsal lumbar spine cole's fracture that is of your wrist right um, that is of your radius actually distal uh, radius the styloid process then uh, femur of the neck okay they will keep losing height and uh, there will be increased kyphosis due to the compression of the anterior part of the vertebral bodies now when you do the diagnosis what we will see radiological features you will see loss of the vertical height of the vertebra cord fish appearance uh, because the disc becomes biconvex there is decreased bone mass ground glass appearance of the bones like the pelvis there is sinks index based on which you can grade the osteoporosis based on the trabecular pattern of the femoral neck and you can also use the vertebra or the metacarpals to grade the osteoporosis other investigations that you can do are like um, uh, in uh, you can check for the serum uh, Uh, the plasma proteins and the plasma albumin both will be less because these people can have protein deficiency but calcium phosphate and uh, alkaline phosphate limits are normal densitometry you can do uh, that is by uh, photons uh, from the gamma emitting isotopes these photons are absorbed by the bone calcium this uh, densitometry can be ultrasound based or an x-ray based that is uh, you can do a dexa scan uh, this is the gold standard for densitometry this is nothing but dual energy x-ray absorptiometry you can also do neutron analysis uh, activation analysis where you are asking the bone calcium to get activated by these neutron uh, which are being bombed and uh, you will measure the activity then bone biopsy also you can do so these are the investigations treatment medical treatment you can ask them to take a high protein diet calcium vitamin d you can give them um, calcitonin right and then you can give them bisphosphonates alendronate right which will stop the resorption then um then you can give androgens for male right and estrogen for postmenopausal uh, osteoporosis then teriparatide this is uh, uh, for uh, new bone formation you can give teriparatide teriparatide is going to help in the new bone formation and the anti resorptive agents like denosumab strontium strontium yes and fluoride also they have tried okay then what is the orthopedic treatment that you give for these people ask them to do some weight lifting weight bearing not weight lifting not too much also because they are prone to pathological fractures this can become a stimulus for bone formation the weight bearing bracing so that they don't have to prevent pathological fracture okay so that's it about uh, Osteoporosis hope you have learned something in this video bye bye